Welcome to Zen Fitz. Beautiful Sunday morning here in Blackstone, the center of the world. But then you too are at the center of the world. The name of this, the title of this, I just thought of it, talk this morning, this Zen Fit, is uh, I Got No Floaters. <laughs> now, now, yesterday uh, we explored grievances. I got no grievances. And um, I got up this morning and uh, uh, the first thing I came down to my uh, computer and uh, somebody had messaged me and said, uh, you're an idiot, I'm blocking you. <laughs> I block idiots like you. So, so, so that kind of like, I, I noticed that it was kind of like a, a gnat flying by. Or, you know, the, I have a fruit fly that lives by my computer and every day. The fruit fly, there's no food in there. I don't know what he lives on, but he'll fly by, you know, like a fruit fly, you know. And I just, well, he just hangs out here. And I also have floaters in my eye. Uh, most people, do when you get older, you get floaters. They're, they're kind of like little gnats or spots on the retina. And uh, if you, if you, if you, sometimes you can get at the right angle and you think it's a, a gnat, but no, it's in your eye. It's the mode in your eye. I think the Bible said something about that. Take the moat out of your eye. Um, so you got these moats or floaters, you see. Now, so I used that this morning to write about, to, to, to continue to explore grievances. Why do we have grievances hurt? You know, just, we, if you look around, everyone's got a, people, you go to Walmart and the, and the receptionist uh, gives you the wrong change or screws up, you get, and you come back and tell everybody at the house, oh, you guess what just happened? That's a grievance. Anything you repeat that has emotional pain in it is a grievance. It's something that happened either just a few minutes ago or 20 years ago or 60 years ago, or you're your culture, your society can have a grievance. Uh, the South has a grievance. It's about the Civil War. Uh, black people have grievances. Uh, gays have grievances. If you have an identity, you probably have a grievance. <laughs> Christians have a grievance. Oh, <laughs> Jesus got crucified, you know, I got a grievance. Um, the Jews, the Holocaust, I got a grievance. Uh, if you have an identity, I would suspect, I would suggest that that identity is held together by a grievance. Some mutually agreed upon pain, or as I'm going to explore, a floater, you see. So, and everybody, you know, now we can use this floater kind of like as a metaphor for a grievance, uh, because, it, you know, a floater, you can't get rid of it. Uh, you can't get an opera, they can't cut them out. You can't take any medication. Uh, I suppose they might be able to take your retina out and clean it, put it back. But uh, we'll just say that you can't fix it, okay? The fun, that's what my mother used to say, lived to be 102, talking about her body. She said, well, if the doctors can fix it, I get it fixed. But if they can't, I accept it. You know, so... If you can't fix something, you have to accept it. It's madness not to accept it. It's mad. If you can't leave it, can't leave your floater, you can't fix it, accept it. It's madness if, to not accept it. So let's, let's, let's dig a little deeper into this then. If I don't accept it, I got a grievance, you see. If I don't accept it, I got a, I'm grieving. Now, grievance or grieving is loss. I lost something, so I grieve. It could be huge or little. I, I lost my uh, favorite uh, uh, piggy bank. I don't know, whatever it is, you see. But, you see, if, if I, if, if I if, uh, feel that loss, I have a grievance. And um, so let's get back to floaters and see if we can't hang in to get that together. So. Uh, another thing is tinnitus, or ringing in the ear. So I got floaters and I got tinnitus, okay? And um, 
can't get up. When I, when I first discovered I had a ringing in my ears, I went to the doctor and he sent me to a, a audio specialist, you know, and they had a big two guys in the lab coats and they did all kinds of tests and they, and they did it, figure out exactly what frequency I was missing and oh yes, okay. Yeah, we, we, you got the tiny, you got the tinnitus. I said, oh, okay. Well, can you do anything? Can you fix it? Uh, no, we can't fix it. <laughs> so, so I don't even hear my, I don't see the floaters and I don't hear the tinnitus unless right now I do because I'm talking to you about it. But normally I don't notice it. I accept it. It's not even there. Have you noticed that it, unless you notice something, it doesn't exist? You can think about it in this room right now. Uh, is there a, notice the coffee cup by your computer? When, when I was talking, you didn't notice it until I said, see the coffee, or whatever. You see, in other words, until you point something out, it doesn't exist. It's just like in the background. So we, nothing really exists at all. It's all, we're all aware, like you're in a room right now, and if you just rest your awareness, just relax. You're just aware of the whole room. And then you can say, now, now look at the, the mouse pad. Uh, now look at the pencil. Uh, now notice the uh, book. Uh, now notice the uh, computer screen. And so you can go through the room like a flashlight of consciousness and become aware of everything in there. Now suppose there's a uh, pencil there and I say, now notice the pencil and uh, notice that it's, uh, it's, it's an ugly pencil. <laughs> And then you would you might say, well, this pencil, this ugly pencil, shouldn't be here. Oh, but it is. But I can imagine having a better pencil. So now there's two pencils. There's the pencil I got, and the pencil I imagine would be would be a, appropriate for me. You see, uh, ha having a, a nice, fresh, new pencil, and not this old worn stub. You see. So now there's. The pencil that is, and there's the better pencil that I can imagine, and now I've got a tension between the two pencils, the one I got and the one I should have, or could have, or ought to have, or might have, if, or uh, deserve, you see, or promised, maybe I was promised a better pencil. So there's the two, pe but there's really two me's here. There's the me, the real living me of the moment that has this pencil. And then there's the imagined me that has a better pencil. Maybe in the, there's one in the other room. Maybe I have to go buy one. Maybe I have to, whatever. But that second that added me is in the future. So there's the me in the present moment. And then there's the added me in the future that will be better than the me in the present moment with this stubby old pencil. <laughs> See what I'm pointing to here? So now I got a grievance because I got this pencil. I should have a better one. So then this, you know, so hang in here with me. <laughs> so the grievance is not in the object we lost, what, what did I, where's the grievance? So, well, I lost the better pencil. I couldn't, you know, maybe I'm stuck with it. Maybe I, you gotta have that, you gotta stay with that pencil. You can't have a better pencil. Now I'm going, now I got a grievance. And now I may tell people, share it. Trying to get written, get sympathy, get affirmation. Oh yeah, you got a grievance. You should have had a better pencil. How dare they say you can't have a better pencil? <laughs> You see, so now I got this, now I got to share it, hoping that I can give it to somebody and they'll get rid of it for me. But no, they always, they don't, they may, they may give you their grievance. Yeah, that happened to me too. I remember, yada, yada, you know. So we share grievances. That's a pretty common denominator in conversations. If you listen to them from that point of view, everybody's agreeing. I'll share you my grievance if you can, I'll listen to your grievance. And we'll both affirm each other as a victim. So there's a mutual agreement to be in a shared victim society, you see. 
I'm a victim of my grievances. And this is just the way things are. We just think that's normal, you see. But is it? We should, we should ask that question. Is that, is that the way it has to be, you see? Where does the grievance start? Well, it starts from my imagining a better me. You see, a better me in the future. Now there's two me's. There is two me, you see. Before I had the grievance, there was one me. Now there's two. The one with the, with the reality of what is, the one with the floaters, and the one with I shouldn't have floaters. They hurt. The floaters bother me, you see. What bothers me? What bothers you is the fact that you've divided yourself into two me's. And there can only be one me, one you. Think about that. Now, you is a point of view. Did you see the movie Oblivion uh, with Tom Cruise? That was kind of science fiction. But he ended up there was two Tom Cruises. And this was, uh, they were cloned by these aliens. So this was an interesting question. Can there be two yous? Suppose there was enough, suppose you were cloned into an exact copy with the same history, the same memories, the same looks, the same idiosyncrasies, the same everything. Couldn't you couldn't find one floater difference. You couldn't find one. Would there be two yous or would there still be you? Can your point of view be divided into two points of views? Now, psychiatry gets into multiple personalities sometimes. We discover people who have two personalities and they don't even know each other exists. Or multiple, you know, two or more points of view. And they have separate, the mind has been divided into separate personalities, separate points of view, you see. But can you be both at the same time or are you one or the other? So when you have two me's, hang in here with me. We're going deep now. So when there's two me's, I got the me with this floater or the tinnitus or this job or this whatever I got, you see. And, uh, and I got, and I can imagine a better one. You see, now there's two me's. But there must be one. But now there's two. So that is the pain. The pain is in that division of the one into two, and that can't happen. There can't be two me's. If you could do it, then there would be the me with the, with the, with the stubby, ugly pencil, and then there would be the me with the bright, new pencil, and there would be two separate you's, and they wouldn't even know each other existed. You see, <laughs> and that's impossible. So when you imagine a better you, you are imagining the impossible, and yet you believe it's true, so you had divided you, and therein lies the hurt or the pain of grievances. It's not in the pencil. It's not in the floater. It's not in the tinnitus. It's not in the Walmart clerk who dissed you, you see. It's not in the world. The grievance is you. So your grief, so when we have grievances, what we're grieving about is the loss of me. I'm grieving about my own death, you see. I've divided myself and I can't put myself back together. And so like Humpty Dumpty, I run around asking all the king's men to put me back together and nobody can do it. So I grieve. I grieve, you see. Thanks for dropping in. I hope this enjoyed my Zen fit this morning. <laughs> hope you find one for yourself.